Hello everybody, I am just getting ready to cut out a load of tags. I happen to have a couple of different types of tag. Uh, die cut one, these fancy ones here are Tonic Studios and the other one is Sizzix Alterations, this plainer one. I didn't bother with that one. I'm just doing these ones. But actually, you don't need any of that. You could simply buy a set of tags. These are cork tags by Bed Basics from the works. Or you could just get a piece of card, gesso it, and cut it to the size and shape you want. Or use one of these die cuts on the card. But I'm going to use this piece here. Um, but you don't need the die cut, is what I'm trying to say. You can just shape a piece of card yourself. Snippity snip and snippity snip. And all else you'd need then is possibly a hole punch in order to punch a hole in your tag. Possible tag. Like... So, you don't really need, I mean, you just trim that off like that, and there you go, you've got yourself a tag. This is quite large, so I could probably make a couple out of this. And if you want to, you could then round off the corners if you wanted to. You don't have to, I mean, it's huge, so I would cut that in half, say so about there. You've got your own homemade tag. Bingo. Then you get on with the rest of the fun part of decorating. I've decided what to do with these tags now. I've put uh, some uh, grunge paste and paper artsy on this one. I'm just going to see if I can get this to make an impression. I've uh, sprayed it with water to start with. Oh yes, it's definitely going to do it. But I don't need to do it too much. There we go. That's lovely. That's fine. I like it like that. And I'm going to do the same with these two others, but I've got to clean this this off first before I do any more. I don't want it to get any uh, st stuck in my stamp. Okay. It's this uh, background stamp I'm using. What was it called again? Manuscript background. Yeah, that's exactly what it is from Hero Arts. Right, so I'm now going to do this other one. These are the really soft, well I say soft, I mean very flippy. They're almost paper, these tags. The other one here is stiffer, but we'll do this one first. Now that we know it's going to come out nice, having done the big one. But it took quite a while putting it on the big one, so I didn't want to make you sit and watch. So this is going on quite quick because it's a lot smaller. Well, it's not that much more, it's only about half the size, but you don't want too much. But I like that it stiffens the page, you see. Makes the page a little less flimsy. Here we go, that's very nearly done now. And I'm going to use this one that I was going to use before on the bookmarks and didn't. Definitely going to use it on this one, I'll try it anyway. See if it will work. There we are, that's that uh, covered. I'm just going to stick the top on and, well, after I've got up this excess, doesn't matter, it didn't go quite to the very end. I've been um, putting a little water in here to keep the grunge paste from hardening off too much. Right, so let's have a go with this one. Now, this is going to be more flibbly, technical term, flibbly, <laughs> because it's not got a backing, it's only got the sponge stuff on the back, but there we go. I'm going to do it slightly skew with like that. 
Oh no, I forgot to do. <sighs> yeah, I forgot to put the. I forgot to do dose it with water first. So I will now go over that again, and go and rinse this as fast as I can, so I can try again. Right, be back in a moment. It worked better this time. I'm now going to put some random letters, which I've got a little bunch of these here on it as well. V, try an S. Right. I have to wash these as well. I don't want to mess them about. An exclamation mark is always a good idea. That one's okay now to, to leave to set, and we'll do this one now, hoping to use that one on it. Might do a little bit of the text of that now. Let's have a look, see how this goes on. See, this is already much sturdier, so it's not going to make so much difference to the weight of it, but it will to the smaller ones. I like about it for this one is because it's this was made from uh, folded card. That was the edge of the corner of I don't know the was it the um, cereal box? I've forgotten what it was. But because it's bendy, this is going to help to stiffen that up a bit. That's what I wanted to do with this one. A little bit more on this edge. See, it really doesn't matter if like this has been doing. It picks up some colour from the mat because I've had been doing other things on it and the cat I didn't clean the mat it it wasn't all that clean so it's still got some in, I don't know ink from a previous thing I was doing right there we go I wanted to do it that way around though. Too much. There we go. That's lovely. I like that. Good. Good. A few other impressions. I'm going to leave it to dry naturally, so I shall just leave it overnight and come back and see what it looks like in the morning. That one has got some quite a bit of thickness here, but I'm not worrying about that. If it's too thick in the morning when it's dry, I'll just go over it with a sanding block and just bring the surface down a little bit. Might have to do the same with part of that, but as it is, I'm just going to leave this to dry. Well, here are the um, the tags that I've already covered in plaster. One, two, three of them. Two are made out of just ordinary uh, Manila coloured card. Well, paper really. It's become card now. I put the plaster on. It's much thicker and nicer. And this one is just out of a piece of uh, an old, um, I think it was a cereal box, probably, or it could have been a tissue box. I use both those quite a lot. And this is, again, these two are two more pieces. Nothing else on them though, no plaster, just gesso. Um, you can also, uh, being a junk journalist, you can also use... Um, Labels from clothing, that's a nice one. These are even better. If you take these half price thingies off, stickers, I got all these in the sale, so they're nothing like the price they labelled as. <laughs> I like that. I just tear that off. Doesn't matter if it's a bit torn, you can just go over it with gesso anyway, so it doesn't matter. So I've got three, four of them. Lovely go over gesso on all of those and uh, probably take these things. It's because these are raised up, I don't, not bothered that what they say because they're going to be covered up anyway, but if they're taken off, you've got a smoother surface underneath. And there you are. Lots of things. Also, I just opened a box, box of tools with some um, Alan keys in and the, this was a nice piece of card sitting there so I'm going to cover that as well. That'll make a really nice big tag. Lovely, lovely. So there we go. 
Next thing is, let's put these to one side for the moment because these are ready for use and these need gesso and so forth. So just for the moment, put those to one side and we'll get these out. These have gesso on, but nothing else. So I think I'll put those aside as well. I might quite like to stamp on those, perhaps. So in the meantime, I've got all my distress inks out already. I'm not sure if I'll do distress ink on all of these. Let's try this, this one first. See what happens with it. Best to use some kind of surface that doesn't matter if it gets um, colour on it. So I'm using my heat mat for my glue gunning. Let's get my B, half done B out of the way. Eventually I'll get around to doing him. I've tried to arrange these in order of colours, so I've got purples, blues, reds, browns and oranges, and greens. So I've got some way of knowing what I'm looking for. I quite like using things like cracked pistachio or lucky clover. I've got two cracked pistachios there, but one of them is an ink, uh, the ordinary original distress ink, and the other is a distress oxide. So, two, but they're not really, because they're slightly different. Okay, doke. so let's have a look at Lucky Clover, which is quite a dark colour. Right, I finally found my sponges and dauber. What I should have done, of course, is looked exactly where I found these. But no, no. Anyway, in the meantime, I also covered all these with gesso. And I was going to go with the Lucky Clover, or possibly the Cracked Pistachio. Let's have a look at these two. Just that, is that the... no, these are just the Ordinary Distress. So we'll just have a look at these two, see what happens. This is the Cracked Pistachio, so I'm definitely going to have a go with that one. I have got some more ink for the cracked pistachio, but it's for the distress oxide, obviously. Never mind. Here we go. See what we get here. That's lovely. I do like that. Don't you like that? Let's zoom in just a little bit so you can see it a bit better this time. this in the water just yet because I don't think I've quite finished with it. So grab another, make sure all the dog hairs are off. We've all got our pets haven't we? Well some of us have. And I've got a very hairy one. So next is the seedless preserves. It was what the very first one I actually got. In fact I think I got it in a um, an ink as well at the same time. Oops. Mustn't do that. Oh yes, it's lovely colour. Move that round. Might use a little of the orange. I, I like these because you can add colours that you wouldn't think you could. I might add the orange, I might not. I do like that sort of mistiness there. Let's have a bit of it here. Certainly bringing out the um, the beautiful um, text, isn't it? Lovely, yes. So let's have a look. What else can we use? Abandoned coral? It's a little pinky for me. Oh, what's that other one? Red persimmon. I've not used that very much. I have used it a bit, but not very often. So let's have a go now. Because I think that's going to go quite nicely. Move those two out of the way.
a little bit in there. To mix in my... I do like the way it sort of darkens the seedless preserves and enriches it somewhat. Doesn't it? I, I'm not going over the green so much with the orange because I know it's a little muddy. Yeah, let's try twisted citron, in which case, let's take that one off and give us a fresh. Just to give it a little bit more colour, because that cracked pistachio, lovely though it is, on the plaster it's a little, it's a little disappearing. Just around the edge. I think that's that's enough. Yes, I don't want to lose the cracked pistachio. I think that's pretty good. We will leave that one to dry, and it will dry paler. So never mind. And let's have a look at the next one. Let's do some, some different colours. We'll leave these here for the moment. At least, no, I think I'll put that one in to wash. Soak. Um, I haven't used weathered wood very much, so let's have a go with that. Plus, let's get this out of the way while it dries. Plus... What else should we do with that? Yim. I do love my violets, I'm afraid, so I think I'll probably go for wilted violet. Or dusty concord. Wilted violet. We'll try the wilted violet. Yeah. Shall we try the wilted violet in the distress oxide? Let's. Why not? Why not? It's probably got more ink in it than the other ones because it's newer. <laughs> it's quite a bit richer there, isn't it? Yes. I'm not pressing very hard because this is quite strong. So, there you go. Weathered wood, weathered wood. Make sure all the dog hairs are off. And I'm going over here. Because it's almost a blue weathered wood. It's it's a grey, but it's almost a blue. And it does go quite nice with this. And, as we're playing with Distress Oxides, let's have a little bit of this one. The Blueprint Sketch. I think I, I don't wait any longer with these. Let's pop them all in. Squeeze them out and start again. And in fact, I've still got a few left, so it's not disastrous. Now then, um, I do like using dilutions. I really do like the colours. They're so bright 
and strong and I'm very much into bright and strong so I've got dirty martini and fresh lime crochet grape let's have a go at crochet grape good and calypso teal why not And after midnight in the corner. I didn't just use it, it was crushed grape, wasn't it? It was crushed grape. Not crushed a grape, crushed grape. So in order to sort of let's try a bit of the bubblegum pink just to now I think that is way too dark, but I do like strong colours and if I sponge it off too much it may it may go too light. But that that midnight after midnight is quite strong. So yes, there we go. I like that. That let's leave that at that. Bubble gum pink. And squeezed orange. Now I do like fresh lime so let's try a bit of that. And vibrant turquoise. Why not? Yeah. And also a bit of the after midnight. Is it after midnight? Yes, it is. I do I want after midnight, or should I go for? Yes, I go for after midnight. Now I've still got some bare patches, so I'm going to just let this twinkle about because I like drips. There we go. Oh, it's going out of focus. I'm going to have to turn the thing off and start again. That's a bit bad. I haven't done anything. All I've done is reset the camera. So, just swapping those up. I like the way that's sort of mixing about. Let's do that to it. Just in order to see if it would do anything else. And I've also got some bits here, so I'm going to just dip it in and see what happens. There you go. In fact, we'll leave it all to dry and I'll get back to you when these are dry. There we go. I'll get back to you when these are dry. That's about dry now and that's pretty dry. It's because these have got the grunge paste on, so that's working quite well. And I may go over that with a bit more bubblegum pink there. In fact, I probably will because I want that to be a bit more pinky. But you've got to be careful when you're spraying. If you've got something like that, I did get a couple of spots of a dark colour, just tiny, tiny little bits. And it does, do, not damage exactly, but it does make it a bit murkier. So I had to respray that with some more orange. So I'm going to be quite careful what I do here. Now I'm going to leave that stronger, uh, you know, without mopping it up or anything. I'm going to have a go with Dirty Martini now. And that really is showing up the textures and some vibrant turquoise. And then uh, some more fresh lime. little bit of the after midnight in this corner. There we are. Now I have decided that these ones I did earlier are too thin. I mean it's okay if you can put paste on but because they're fancy at the edges I don't think I can do that. So what I've done is I've just cut out a whole load more but I thought I'd be clever. 
and cut one out of card. Or cut a couple out of card. You would not believe how long it took me putting it through and through and through the cut and boss um, cutting machine, die cutter, whatever you call it. <coughs> and it just it just took forever, and I've still got little scraps in here, like there's there's little bits in the corners just here. See, and on this one. There are so many bits. I've got to sort of tidy up these bits with a scalpel. But I've got things like Scrabble letters, which I thought would be quite nice, and matchsticks. Lovely. Don't know what I'll do with those, but I just couldn't have them when I saw them. Oh, yes, yeah, gotta have them. <laughs> oh dear. And wooden letters which I covered with cling film because they didn't come with the top and they keep trying to fall out and escape on me. But they're... I love those. I really like those. So there we go. 